no return visits whatsoever. Um, they had 56 patients that um, were scanned uh, in the post period by point of care ultrasound and diagnosed um, with interception and only one false negative where someone didn't see an interception. And in that case, the person had a high level of suspicion and still sent them for an ultrasound. So there's no validation or at least no seeming proof to suggest that just because you're doing it this, this is the bedside, that you're divorced from your clinical reasons. So if you feel like someone still needs an ultrasound, you can still get that. And, and it would suggest that uh, a reasonable group of people who have a high capability of finding interceptions are, are going to be practicing in a safe and, and probably more cost-effective manner if they're using point-of-care ultrasound. So I thought that was really cool. Um, quick pitfalls. Um, so what are we seeing here? Interception. Is no. No. Do we see a target sign? Yeah, but it's very little. Mm -hmm. So, oh, so maybe it's an ileal. Yeah, so it's a small bowel, small bowel intest. So our clues there are a few things that are all kind of present here. So size, so this is, you know, if you look at your scale here, this is a centimeter right here, right? So this length from here to here is a centimeter. So you've got about one centimeter structure. Um, and then you also see pretty obvious peristalsis through that, right? So this thing is just kind of moving and, and sort of snaking around. You're not going to see that with a, uh, a small bowel to large bowel interception. Um, and here, you see it again. So another one right here, right? So another interception, and then you actually can see through the kidney behind here. In case you're wondering what a pseudo kidney, you know, that looks at all like a pseudo kidney doesn't to me. But um, so it's another small bowel one. <clears throat> and what's happening with this one? This is a kind of a unique situation. Is this a problem or no? What's this? Just a little nice. Why do you say that? Because it has, I cannot see the hypergogenic, but I can see the shadow before, after hmm. this. So what thing shadow? You said hyper, like, so you're saying uh, appendicle because you say basically calcified things will shadow. What else will shadow? Air, you say? Yeah. So so it's an air-filled something. It looks like it's got sort of a front wall and a back wall, and it's got this uh, shadowing behind it. Very well shaped. Is it? Um, foreign. foreign. Yes, it's, yeah. it is a foreign body, but it's not a foreign body that's like entirely foreign to the patient. For, for medical reason. So it's GGA2. Um, so, oh, so my God. you know, one of, the, <laughs> one, of the, one of the classic things you look for, um, you know, in a GGA patient who comes in and says they have new abdominal pain, they're vomiting, whatever, would be a interception related to their GGA2 being a lead point, which is what's going on here. So, oh. So this, this may or may not be a problem, right? So, so you can see this sometimes if you just look for it. Those kids are probably having some degree of regular interceptions um, at some regular intervals. Now, if they come in, however, and there's a big change, they're vomiting lots, and you look and you see something like this, that could actually be pathological. So it sort of depends on, on the clinical context that you're seeing it within, but it certainly could be. <clears throat> okay, what's happening with this one? Where am I? What am I seeing? I guess I'll just get to the meat of the point. So, so this is what down here? So, so it's right. And these are our vessels. And so they're not coming to the surface because there's some stuff going on up here. What's this thing up here? Could be, but I don't think it is. Um, do you notice how it kind of has some air shadowing within it. And you notice how the air shadowing very much like kind of at the end of the clip here is going to all kind of come over to this, this structure over here, which is probably an air filled structure that lays on top of the psoas, your semicolon, right? 
And what do you think about the the bow you're seeing here? Does it look normal to you, or is there what's what's wrong about it? it looks thick, right? Yeah. And what do you think about all this bright stuff it's around bright. here? Bright. Is this stuff you normally see? No. Bright. And this stuff here, what do you think these things are? Lymph nodes. Lymph nodes, right? So put it all together. You've got um, echogenic fat, you've got some lymph nodes, and you've got a thick bowel wall that seems to be entering the ascending colon. And what have I told you? You have a 10 year old patient with a month of abdominal pain and weight loss and bloody stools and yeah, it's terminal ileitis. So this is this is actually because I had my when I started out my uh, focus fellowship year, and uh, my my favorite part about it is I was able to convince a GI fellow to admit this kid to their service based on this image. So, um, which you know usually they go to peds and they end up being this like humming and hawing about what the diagnosis is when it's staring you in the face. Um, so she was quite lovely. I think she was just new and didn't realize that she didn't. She, she didn't she have to. <laughs> she didn't have to admit all her IBD <laughs> patients. But anyways, um, so uh, yeah, this is terminal ileitis, which can look in some cases like an interception. So if you actually see it, this is now the same patient seen from the transverse view. So if you've turned the probe ninety degrees and you look at that area, you actually see something like this, right? Which you know, if you look at it under the right kind of lens, you might say, oh, it's kind of a targetish structure, it's thick, it's got this thing. You don't actually see that, that those multiple layers. You just see the one layer and then the internal fluid, um, but it's very thick, right? So this is your terminal ileum from a, a transverse view. Okay, so back to our case. Um, so uh, this is our seven month old who's looking really, really awful. And you look and you see this, do they have an interception? Yay or nay? Yes, they do. Um, would you say this interception looks like a, like, now there is a, um, there's sometimes you'll see these things like um, mild, moderate, and severe, and this sort of thing, which I don't think really necessarily has any basis in, in sort of, um, I don't know, literature in terms of supporting those, those inferences about describing interceptions, but if you were to just look at this, does this look like a big problem for this patient or does this look like a uh, manageable issue? It looks like a big problem. Why do you say that? Because you have free fluid also. Mm -hmm. this is, it is very big, it's like more than three, it's almost far. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it looks like the organized in the center. Mm -hmm. It's not that you can see all the layers perfectly defined. It's huge. It's a massive interception. It's got fluid. It's got probably a bunch of lead points. Um, and uh, yeah, it looks awful. And the patient's not doing very well, clearly. Um, what's this on top of the interception? It's fluid. Is that free fluid? It's not very spiky. But I like that. Not very spiky. It's yeah. It's contained, yeah. So contained fluid in the abdomen. Like a could be like a small bowel obstruction too. Which uh, it could be correction. Could be a bladder. Could be a bladder. Could be a bladder. <laughs> <laughs> I'd go with bladder here. I mean, you know, those are all great thoughts, but uh, that's definitely the patient's bladder. So now that you said that, that's the bladder, and I'm seeing this interception laying behind it. Where is the interception? Yeah, it's all the way into the rectum. Oh so, so it's a giant interception. Um, so, could you see from the So, could you feel it? If I you don't know. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> I, I can't remember. You I probably, you probably could have. Yeah, yeah. All I remember is this patient was this listless seven-month-old yeah. that we actually knew already had this problem, but um, the extent of it wasn't quite clear. Um, they were coming from kind of far away and had a bunch of days of symptoms. Now. What you're seeing here is the same interception seen from different angles. Now, whoa, what do you see up the top here for a quick sec? Because you were mentioning before a contained structure right here. Boom. It's probably either small bowel or stomach that briefly comes into view that looks very distended. Whenever you start to see abdominal structures with that kind of fluid appearance with those little kind of snowball or um, a snowflake kind of things moving around in it, it's usually a sign that you're blocked. 
like you don't usually see the stomach that's that fluid filled. Things are usually kind of moving along. So this is a kid that's also having, having some obstructive features. Now I didn't spend a lot of time looking at this because this was done during my first year of uh, fellowship here. Um, and I was just like very impressed with what I was seeing. Um, but you can also see that this thing kind of coils around here at one point, right? So it's really long, like we're at seven centimeters, which we often don't use in young infants like this. Usually I'm at four centimeters and it kind of coils all the way to the back. And then this is just another angle of it where you can kind of see that it's kind of coiling around 